Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Music and Medicine. This actually tonight represents our Black History Month edition for our Music and Medicine program. And as you know, the mission of this program, Music and Medicine, is to bring to light and inform the community about a number of important health information, health related uh, information, uh, important health information that, that people need to be aware of and know. Uh, but we have a unique platform where we not only provide health information, but we provide it uh, with an entertaining platform. And with that in mind, we have a very special uh, entertainer um, with us tonight, uh, Miss Esther Fitz. Uh, she's a remarkable singer, and I know that uh, you the, in the audience, you're going to enjoy um, her musical performance this evening. Tonight, the topic of this Black History Month edition is going to focus on a very important uh, subject matter uh, centered around the, the, the topic of mentorship. And specifically, uh, we're gonna get into a very important discussion about the academic achievement gap that many of our uh, black and brown students um, are experiencing. It, it's, it's very important and it relates to the topic of, of uh, medicine and health outcomes because we know that um, the more educated that individuals are, um, you know, when individuals um, and students receive their high school diplomas and, and, and especially their college diplomas, they actually have a better quality of life. And, and the research and the evidence actually um, points to the fact that they actually have a, a, a healthier uh, life, um, um, also more pr productive. And, and so education matters in terms of one's uh, overall health. So we actually also have a very special guest, uh, you know, speaking of mentorship, uh, he's really uh, the champion, undisputed champion uh, of mentorship, um, um, Coach Ted Ginn. And, and I'm going to provide an introduction to, for, for the coach, um, you know, in a, in a second. But uh, everybody knows about Coach Ted Ginn and, and what he's done with respect to mentorship. So we're happy to have him on the program. But I want to start out by uh, talking about some of uh, the, this topic of the academic achievement gap. And I want to show some slides here. Um, you know, I mentioned that students who graduate from high school have higher wages, lower unemployment, better long-term physical and mental health. Um, the, there are two people, uh, especially that I want to focus on this evening uh, when, I, when I talk about mentorship. Uh, these were the greatest mentors in my life, my, my parents, uh, Charles and Grace Maudlin. Uh, this is a picture uh, when my mom graduated from Ball State University with her master's uh, degree in teaching. Um, you know, I, I believe the year was around 1972 or so. Um, you can see me pictured uh, in the center there. Um, and next slide, my, my father... Um, um, he, he was a mentor of mine also. That's a picture of him with his uh, uh, gold medals, uh, which he won in 2006. Um, my father was a National Senior Games Association um, uh, Olympian. Uh, he set four records for men over the age of 40 in track and field, the 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter, and the long jump. Uh, next slide, my, my parents served as great role models for me. Um, this is... Uh, we, we grew up, uh, we had uh, humble beginnings, my, my siblings and I. This is our the house uh, in which I was raised in for the majority of, of, of my youth. Uh, next slide. Um, I also um, had a great uh, mentor and role model. Uh, this is my grandmother, Clara Hampton. She lived to be uh, 103 years old, born in 1888. Uh, great role model. Next slide. And I mentioned my parents and my grand. My, my grandmother, because I, I think it's important that we always, uh, students uh, need to recognize those who came before us and made sacrifices. Um, these are unsung heroes in many respects uh, who, were, who were behind the scenes propping, in us, propping us up. You know, the, the successes that I personally have had in my life are not because of my own uh, merits, uh, my own achievements. It's because people who had, had come before me um, to provide me opportunities to help pave the, the path for me uh, in many respects um, and provide me opportunities that they never had. And of course, um, um, for Black History Month, we, we have to recognize uh, the great uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Next slide. So I, I, I talked about, um, I spoke about 
um, the fact that my parents were role models. They they actually faced a number of um, of situations. You know, I, I've encountered um, sig- significant hurdles, but nothing uh, of the same magnitude um, that my parents faced. And and this this is getting into the subject matter that we're going to talk about. There are a lot of reasons why uh, many black and brown uh, students are not achieving uh, to the best of their abilities um, because of a lot of the challenges that we face that cause us in many situations to to doubt ourselves and, and to give up. Next slide. So this is a picture of me uh, on my first day of medical school, mo- moving in uh, to my dorm in medical school. Next slide. Uh, this is um, four years later, um, um, graduating. Uh, actually, no, this is um, a picture of me graduating uh, from Northwestern University um, with my undergraduate degree. Next slide. And four years later, uh, this is um, a picture of me with my parents graduating uh, when I was graduating from Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. My father, um, this was probably the, the greatest moment of my medical school career, my graduation day not because I received my, my medical diploma, but because my father had an opportunity um, to participate and deliver the invocation and benediction uh, for our medical school class. And, and one reason it's very important to me is I nominated my father to, to uh, perform in this capacity at, our, at my medical school graduation uh, because my father never had an opportunity to finish high school. He had to leave high school in 11th grade to enter the World War II and serve in the Navy and, and to help protect his country. And so my father was always very self-conscious his whole life that he never had an opportunity to um, acquire his high school uh, uh, education, you know, let alone a college degree. And by me nominating him, it was my way of demonstrating to him that I was very proud of, of who he was and, and what his accomplishments are. Uh, next slide. And again, I think it's important that our youth, uh, that we, we thank uh, those who uh, provided opportunities uh, for us. And so I've actually dedicated my career not only to addressing health disparities, but also to mentoring students. Um, This is a picture of of me in 2014 where I had an opportunity to deliver uh, the commencement address over at John Hay High School. Next slide. And um, this is um, when my son graduated from Texas Tech. Next slide. I wanted to show him that I was very proud of him. My my, um, daughter, Meredith, graduated from Shaker High School in 2016. Uh, Next slide. And some more pictures of me, um, you know, mentoring medical students. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Uh, provided me opportunities so I could become a transplant surgeon. Uh, again, more pictures uh, of me. Um, this is uh, when I had an opportunity to be a visiting professor at Northwestern University Medical School. Next slide. Uh, again, uh, these are some students, uh, high school students, that I had an opportunity uh, to mentor, and I've mentored several students over the years. Next slide. Uh, next slide again. Next slide. And so one, one organization that I'm very proud of is the um, Black Professional Association. They do a lot of mentorship and they provide scholarship opportunities for students. Health Legacy of, of Cleveland is another organization uh, that students should uh, look into because they actually provide uh, uh, scholarships for students as well. Uh, Reverend Theophilus Cavanus has been a great uh, mentor and role model for me. Next slide. Uh, former Congressman uh, Lewis Stokes as well. Next slide. So yeah, so I just wanted to highlight the importance of, of mentorship and, and, and how mentors have, have actually helped me achieve my goals. Um, nationally, um, there, there are some statistics from 2019 uh, looking at high school graduation rates, black versus white, African-Americans versus whites. Only 79% of African-Americans graduate from high school compared to 89% for whites, 93% for Asians. And then you look at college graduation rates, only 42% of black students actually um, who attend college actually graduate uh, 20 percentage points uh, lower than uh, their white counterparts who graduate at uh, rates of 62%. Now, just briefly, I want to touch on why we have this uh, academic uh, gap, uh, especially experienced by students of color several reasons, uh, and, and this would um, require uh, me dedicating the whole uh, program to this, but I'm just going to briefly um, go over the several uh, 
contributing causes, uh, institutional racism. Uh, it leads to uh, discouragement, prevents uh, many people from pursuing their dreams, creates self-doubt, self-defeating ad attitudes, uh, pessimistic views about the future, uh, lower socioeconomic status. We know um, uh, failing schools, um, schools who, uh, which are oftentimes in the inner city don't have the, the financial resources to compete with other schools, lower teacher expectations of many African-American students. We don't have enough um, black and brown teachers, uh, many of whom are, are role models. Uh, oftentimes also we internalize what society uh, has uh, told us that um, we are inferior, we're not, we don't have the intellectual capacity, and we, we internalize the, those thoughts. Um, we also see, and again, there, there's research and evidence that, that in many situations, not all, but many black parents are not as involved uh, with, with their, their schools and, and the students as they should be. And again, I, we understand that many parents are working two or three jobs. It's very difficult. Um, many black kids don't place education as a priority. So these are some of the things that uh, we, uh, you know, the audience, we need to be aware of. Um, and what I did, um, I, I actually wrote a book uh, on mentorship. Uh, it took me about four or five years to write this book. It's, it's called, It Isn't Difficult to Do It If You Know How to Do It. The book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. But again, it, it's, per, it, it's relevant, it's pertinent to our discussion because this book, I, I, I sat down and I wrote this book about lessons I learned growing up from my parents, my community, my church, um, and lessons I learned on my uh, journey in becoming a, a urologist and a kidney transplant surgeon, you know, getting accepted to college, graduating, getting into medical school, graduating. Um, this book is replete with a, a number of success tips that I want to give back to, to, to these students because uh, I think it's very important that we, the older generation, impart our knowledge, wisdom, advice, guidance, so that these younger students will have um, their, their success journey will be a little bit easier than maybe what we experienced. That, that is our obligation. I recognize that we, the older generation, we cannot uh, prevent it, the many obstacles or roadblocks. I think it's important that students uh, learn to overcome um, barriers and, 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 and challenges. That's very important. But I, I think um, it, it, it's also very important to recognize that many black and brown students are not starting um, on the same level. Um, you know, from a football perspective or analogy, we want to be able to position our students on the 50-yard line as opposed to the 10-yard line and many of the, the students that they're going to com be, be competing with in, in high school and college, um, they know a lot of these success tips already through successive generations of people who have come before them. You know, many individuals have had uh, their parents, grandparents, and, and others uh, already, um, um, you know, who have graduated from college and, and provided them this information. So this book, I, I believe every student, every library, every coach, every teacher, um, every uh, high school counselor should have this book. I, I, I uh, wholeheartedly believe in the content of this book. Um, and so, you know, with that being said, um, um, we want to go ahead and, and get into our, our conversation and, and our guest uh, for this evening. Again, our topic is about the academic achievement of gap and gap and the importance uh, of mentorship. Um, I'd like to bring in my co-host, um, you know Jerome Brown um, to the uh, to the broadcast at this point. What's um, hey, up, Doctor? Hey, how you doing, Jerome? Oh man, life is great, man. I can't, you know, I can't complain at all. Yeah, li li life is great. We have to get through this winter, but I know we will. We're we're only just a couple months, or you know, uh, away from springtime, le I know. less than a couple months. Right. So, right. so you know, speaking of mentorship, I, I know you actually have a mentorship program. You want to tell us about it? Um, well, I, I just started a nonprofit organization. Um, about a month ago. So we've been doing this for like 10 years, though. Yeah. But we finally became legal. And the name of it is From the Soul Foundation. And what we do is provide uh, clothing, food, uh, any kind of assistance, school supplies, toys, uh, like I said, cash assistance to the most the worst areas that we can find that are in need the most. We also go to some schools if we hear that a school, some of the kids may be dirty, we'll go and throw a whole event 
and give away every um, soap, toothbrush, toothpaste, deodorant, socks, whatever they need at that time. So it's been a journey, man, and I'm enjoying every minute of it, you know? Well, well, thank you for doing that. And, and in future shows, we're going to want to hear more about your your mentorship program, a lot of the things that you're doing, you know, with, with the kids that you're mentoring. But Absolutely. at this time, I, I'd like to bring in the consummate uh, mentor, coach, role model. There, there's nobody... Um, you know, better and, and, and there's no better role model. Um, he, he's, he's walked the walk, um, coach Ted Ginn, um, to the broadcast. Uh, so just briefly, uh, Ted Ginn senior, uh, he's been, um, described, um, as rewriting the game plan for high school football in Cleveland. Um, just a brief biography. Uh, he spent his early years in Franklinton, Louisiana, where his grandparents instilled in him rigid Christian values. He moved to Cleveland uh, for his high school years, and he played uh, football at uh, Glen, Glenville. He played center line uh, backer. Um, and after graduating, um, he returned to Glenville as a volunteer assistant football coach and full-time uniform security guard. Uh, he eventually, um, after um, 10 years uh, as an unpaid assistant coach, uh, um, went on the coaching payroll uh, in 1986. Um, he's taken his team and he's, he's won multiple playoffs. Um, uh, he's also been a, a, a championship um, a track coach also at, at uh, uh, Glenville. Um, but aside even from the um, sporting um, uh, accomplishments, um, Coach Ted Ginn um, has uh, educated a number of uh, athletes who have been awarded full scholarships, including his son, uh, Ted Ginn Jr. at Ohio State. Everybody knows about uh, his son, Ted Ginn uh, Jr., who played uh, in the NFL. Um, but he says that uh, Coach Ginn has always point, pointed out that his mission is not to win football games. It is to save the lives and, and souls of young people. And, and so um, I'd like uh, with, with that, uh, and again, um, that was just a brief introduction. Um, it didn't really do him justice. He's done so much more and, and he's, he's um, done so much in, in terms of advancing the lives of, of so many uh, individuals. Um, he started the Ted Ginn Academy also, which is a school, um, uh, um, all boys school uh, dedicated to uh, educating, um, you know, boys, uh, especially, you know, young men, I should say. Um, at, at risk, and, and uh, he's done made mark, uh, remarkable uh, strides and had remarkable accomplishments. So, uh, Coach Ginn, uh, welcome to Music and Medicine, and thank you for being here with us this evening. I think the coach is on mute. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Uh, How are you doing this evening? Uh, oh, I'm great. You know, it's an honor to be on the show. Uh, you know, life is is what it is. You know, we we blessed to be alive. So, no, know. we are, and we have to remember that. Um, we just came off of a Super Bowl week, and uh, I don't know what your thoughts about are about that. You know, <laughs> well, you know, you always want the higher boys to win. You know, but unfortunately, they didn't get that done. But you know, I'm 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 okay with the with the win, with them losing. You know? Yeah. I always want to hire people to win. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's going on at the Ginn Academy? Uh, how many students does the school have? Um, you know, how do you do what you do? I mean, you, again, you, you started this whole, uh, you know, Ginn Academy. Uh, how, how many people have a whole school, you know, dedicated to their own mission? I mean, that, that's remarkable. Wouldn't yeah. you say, Jerome, that that's... <laughs> Man, uh -huh. you, you've been impacting thousands of lives for thousands of years, you know, so, mm -hmm. it, you know, the story is just still being written as we talk right now, you know, yeah. you still putting and adding more stuff to it. So again, it's appreciated from each and every student, each and every parent, each and every grandparent that all were a part of uh, your massive journey and your massive input. Uh, the world is a better place. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Gann seen it. Yes. But, you know, first of all, Doc, you know, I just want to elaborate on some of the things that you were saying earlier about how you was raised. And whether you know it or not, that's why 
we that's why I have a school. That's why I do what I do, because that's is what's missing is the home, you know. And and it, what I always say is the table. Nobody's sitting at the table with our children. Nobody's teaching the core values of life, you know. Uh, education got to got to change because of that, you know. Uh, you was fortunate to have your father and everybody, um, and the things you went through. The kids have more challenges than that. You know, they don't have that home. They don't have that table. So that's kind of why I have a school. And when you start talking about mentoring and stuff like that, you know, I built a school just to do that. You know, um, it kind of started with my own son and it kind of started with the football team. I never could understand why we couldn't win, and I couldn't understand academically why we couldn't make it, even when I went to school. So you only learn from what you're exposed to. People can't really teach you anything. You understand? You know, we're teaching the test. We're teaching you how to read, write, and all that. But we don't know how to navigate through the world, you know. And schools today have to understand that, that we have to change education. We need more mentoring. And mentoring means only giving you directions. Nobody's sitting at a table giving us directions at home anymore. And that's what we learned. You learned and you went to school and you obeyed. But you was taught how to make it. So I create a table through football, through the, through the school, through mm -hmm. track. So I do this work every day. It's not... You know, you people talk about mentoring. Well, what do you call mentoring? Well, I got a kid, and most rich folks talk this type of language. You know, I got a kid that I go down here on St. Clair, and me and my wife take them to, to the movie, and they get them a box of popcorn and stuff like that. <clears throat> I say, so what do you do? Well, I, I mentor. I got a couple of kids I mentor, and I see them once a month. You're just making yourself feel good. Yeah. You know, mentoring is every day, every moment yes, of the day. Is. You know what I'm saying? And I have learned that over 40 years, you know, <clears throat> and that's when I enjoyed what you were saying, because that's the answer. That's the answer to the question why we can't make it, because this is why this is like that, because we don't have no more people sitting at the table with our children. So I, I got a system, an educational system that I use through football, a school. And, and so what we need is more people like you, Mr. Brown, you know, like, like you, Doc, that can give back, you know, teachers and different things like that. What makes a good educational system is when you can have the power to mentor somebody and change their mind and direction. That is so, so tough to do, but it's the greatest thing that you could ever do, you know? So I just kind of started there because this is what I do for, for a living. I get up every day to get down with, with children. I oversee my school. I make sure that we don't miss that the kids don't miss. We try to give each kid the individual life plan. I have mentors that work for me, which I call them youth support staff. And what that is, is that you, I give them a court hoard of kids and you got to pick them up as a ninth grader and you got to walk them to the 12th and then you never leave them. You know, because we can't say we mentor the people, today we mentor tomorrow they gone. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you gotta be in their life forever. You know, I got 50 year old kids right. okay. <laughs> that I have mentored. You know right. what I'm saying? But I just think that nobody really understands. We talk about the trouble in the world, but it's on us. Because yeah. we know the answer. You just gave it to us. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody's sitting at the table. We don't have nobody to look up to. Who, who, who are we following? Who are the kids following? The cell phone. Social media is raising our children. We don't have people sitting back working to educate our kids. I do it every day. 
You know, I'm just not sitting here talking to you, talking about it. I got a couple of kids. I'm going to go down and talk to them, take and give them some popcorn. I do it every day, all day. You understand? Because they have, they'll have not a clue because the world is not the same. So you can't educate. You can't have a cooker cutter type system because if you got two or three kids, you can't treat them all the same. You understand? Yeah. So you yeah. got to get to know them. That means you got to have a relationship. That means you got to talk to them. That means you got to touch them. You know what I'm saying? Whether yeah. you're the teacher, the principal, or whatever, you know? So that's just like a quick um, answer to what I think mentoring is, but how it all got started because I was a coach and I never could understand why we were struggling in all areas of education, winning, <clears throat> And our kids didn't have an understanding because I didn't have one. They just told you to go to school, you know. So, so you, so you're a coach, you're a, a, a teacher, you're a professor, you're a social worker, you're a psychologist. I love it. Um, in, in many ATM, ATM. In many respects, you're you're a parent, you know, a surrogate Absolutely. parent. Absolutely. And you know, again, w- one thing that I that I touched on a lot of it is about uplifting uh, the the self esteem of, of a lot of these young Absolutely. men. Man, you hit it all. You know, the, 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 if, see, that, that's the one thing that is probably the most difficult to, to have one of these young men believe that they actually have an opportunity, you know, to, to achieve that what they see in front of them right now, you know, uh, if they're living, you know, in the inner city, um, uh, you know, if, if they didn't come from a background um, where their parents, um, you know, were educated or had certain opportunities. Um, that there is a better way of life, you know, that, that they can um, uh, aspire to. Right. So um, they, they don't have to believe all the, the negative messaging that society is, is giving them. No. Um, you, you know, know so. That, and you're hitting it, you're hitting it, you're batting a thousand with that. Just like today, I talk to the junior class. You know, I go to the classroom and I have teachers to give me an opportunity just to talk. You know, I talk about your appearance. I talk about how you look. I talk about why we dressed up, tied up. You know, nobody wants us, Doc, to really educate our kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They really want us to believe all that hype they talk about, you know? So we have to be a a behavior analyst to change that behavior that they done had for 12 or 13 years, Mm -hmm. you know, because I'm from 9 to 12. So the day I was talking to him about uh, this number of mentoring, talking about they got a place for don't touch me. They got a place for nappy head. They got a place for I don't know. You know, these are all the things. They got a place for if, you, if your pants dragging and all this kind of stuff. What they don't have a place for, for African-American kids, is somebody to come out of the inner city this polish and standing tall, you understand? And and educated to know how to navigate mm-hmm. through the world, they scared of you. Yes. So you yes. know, Jerome, um, and and coach, I, I understand that you you have a dress code that where the the, the, the young men wear a, a suit and tie. They're they're not wearing their 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 baggy you know jeans. No, torn you up. don't bring yourself in here. Right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> You understand? We we we're, we're at work. Mm-hmm. We're we're businessmen. We're mm-hmm. we're coming in here. You can't bring you here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you are uh, in a in a apprenticeship, and and to to who you're going to become as a man. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? We got to teach you all that. The math, science, social, and you know, requirements for everybody in the world. You know, and you know, I'm gonna find people. They say, "Well, you, you, you didn't go to college. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. What is your curriculum?" Well, I tell them all the time, my curriculum is different. My curriculum is love, passion, and understanding. Yes, you understand? sir. I'm gonna love them. I'm gonna have passion with it, and I'm gonna get proper understanding. Math, science, social studies is a requirement of everybody in the world. And you're going to also have expectations of them as well. That, that comes with expectations. That's right. So it's a human side to education that people don't want to touch. Yes, it is. You understand? And that's what we forget. 
You can have all the academic people tell you whatever, but it's a human side that we forget about, but that's what your dad gave you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is how you got to live. This is how you got to work. You got to have high expectations. You go down to the schoolhouse, you do that schoolhouse work, but you but when you come back here, you got to know how to do something. Mm. That sounds so crazy to me coming out of the South. I remember my grandfather saying that. You know what I'm saying? That means that you got to learn how to build a fence. You got to learn how to grow some cotton. You got to learn how to grow. You got to feed the chickens, the cows, and learn how to eat and sell. You understand? You got to be an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? And you got to understand how it works. See, our kids don't even know how to cross the street now because they, they, they're not teaching that. We're not grabbing our kids, putting them on the bus, tell them don't jaywalk. You know what I'm saying? All these things that we was raised up under and then have an understanding about it. You know, just knowing your phone number, just knowing, because the cell phone have taken all that away. Technology have taken all that away, you know? And then the kids have no fear because they don't know what to fear. Mm-hmm. You know, there's certain things that you got to do in, in school, in life. Yeah. And so I said, why did you go to high school? Nobody told us. So I say, this is why why you go to high school. They say hi. So you got to put yourself in a high position. And you're working on your on your brand and who's gonna be as a man, you know, and you're gonna we're gonna transition you into the world. You know, and all that is missing. And all that's part of mentoring, man. All that's and it's daily work. It's not every when you feel like it or when you wanna feel good. It's not gonna get you in heaven. You know what I'm saying? And if your heart is not in dealing with children and people as a leader, it's a judgment day for you. And I talk to teachers just like that. If it ain't in your heart, it's not the place for you. Exactly. So I, I think what we're going to do, and, and I appreciate, and, and I'm, I'm taking all of this in. I'm, I'm learning, um, you know, from what you're saying. I, I know the audience is as well. Um, but we're going to take this opportunity. Uh, we have a great uh, entertainer, uh, Esther Fitz. Uh, we're going to let her okay. come in for a few minutes and uh, uh, do what she does. And, and again, she's been able to achieve uh, what she's been able to achieve. We're going to we're going to hear based on hard work, dedication, focus. Uh, it didn't just come by accident. So uh, so Esther, uh, thank you uh, for joining in the broadcast. And uh, we look forward to. Um, you know, hearing uh, a, a few songs. So, um, you know, what what do you want to uh, sing for us today? Um, um, Jerome, um, before she sings, um, uh, you, you've known Esther for a while. Um, yeah. Yeah. So um, why don't you um, give us a little uh, information about Esther, you know, if you would. Well, I know one thing. She's one of the hardest working um, entertainers in the industry. She's one of the best live performers that you'll see. So I recommend everybody to go check her out on the live performance. She has also performed for children, you know, a couple of my events personally. So uh, I just know she's one of the more, uh, one of the hottest up and coming uh, artists in this region, not just Cleveland, Ohio, the state for that matter. And, you know, there's great things coming in their future. So thanks. Uh, so, um, what do you have for us, Esther? We're looking uh, forward to it, for, to hearing your, your voice. Um, actually, to, I'm going to be singing. I'm going to start out with All I Do by Stevie Wonder, who's actually um, someone who I've admired my whole entire life. And though he's not a mentor to me, someone who I've, I've admired his songwriting, his his performance, his skill, his ability, and his how he, you know, no obstacle was too great for him ever. So we're going to start Absolutely. out with Stevie. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right, let's hear that. Oh, you made my soul a butterfly. You get to be my one of you guys. You get to be all that matters to me. I'm hoping, pray each a little more love I have to give. A little more love that is for the truth. Cause all I do is say about you. All I do is think about you. 
Outstanding. Hey, that, that was outstanding. Hey, that came from the soul, like my from the soul foundation. It's got to. <laughs> uh, yes, the extended version. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the younger generation. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that not everybody in the younger generation has been even exposed to Stevie Wonder. It's, I mean, oh. they need to go back and listen to his music. You know. Oh man, he's one of the greatest writers of all time. Composer, oh. everything. He's he was amazing. Beyond what people even know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So, you know, Jerome, uh, the coach was was talking about, um, 
you know, the fact that a lot of um, kids don't feel like they need to become educated. Um, and it, it, it's, I mean, you, you think back and, and you know, I, I learned about this, you know, um, some time ago, but back in the slave days, it was illegal to teach slaves how to read. Yeah. Um, and, and now, you know, we've come, you know, several hundred years later, we actually have the opportunity um, to acquire our education. And, and a lot of times we're, we're sabotaging ourselves. I, I've seen, I, I remember even when I was in high school, you know, growing up and, and I see it now that a lot of kids, they intentionally um, self-sabotage because they don't want to be seen acting or seem as if they're acting white. Um, you know, it, it's, um, there, there's peer pressure that some kids are exposed to. I mean, uh, you know, the coach would know more, more about this than, than I, but, um, you know, we, we have to make these kids understand that, that it's okay, you know, to achieve, you know, academic success. You're, you're not, um, you know, turning on your race. You're, you're, you're not, um, turning on your culture. Um, you know, it, it's all about, you know, achieving your education and, and, and knowledge, you know, to advance the quality of your life and, and that of your family. So um, are, are you seeing this, uh, Jerome, and the kids that you're mentoring and working with that that sometimes they think it's not cool um, to study, to read? I'm, I'm seeing that from most of them, not okay. just That's because right. it's just not the cool thing to do. And it's not in the song that they're listening to. So the song is telling 90 percent of them to shake it to twerk it, to sell it, to shoot it. And nobody's telling them to learn it, to love it, to embrace it. And that's the problem that we're having. And that's why I'm also glad that we were able to bring someone as um, on Esther Fitz level because she is a person that embodies all of those type of love, mm -hmm. harmony, the peace, and, you know, so I appreciate uh, her again coming on. And what are your feelings, Esther, about this particular situation that we're dealing with with our youth nowadays? It is hard because it's we're in a social media society where everything's, you know, everybody wants to be somebody else and people haven't embraced what's their own. And a lot of people aren't taking the time to, you know, try to find their own lane. Um, so it is a complicated situation, but you do have, that's why where the mentorship does come in handy because uh, yeah, they need good representation. You know what I mean? And they need good mm -hmm. examples and they need to, a personal <laughs> touch. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I definitely feel that I, I had to teach Zumba for the kids this past summer. And, you know, I, 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 yeah. got, I don't get to teach kids often, but uh, just seeing how much they care about what the next person thinks and so worried about, you know, what another view, you know, that it's not so common to care about, you know, yourself first. Uh, right. So it is, it is sad, but it's not something that can't be changed. You're right about that. I like that last line that you said, um, who was the important person to you? Who was your mentors that helped you become the woman that you are today? Um, I'd have to say mainly my mother. Uh, really? My mother's a, she's a classic, beautiful woman. She's a doctor like yourself. Uh, uh, she she just is um, she always encouraged me to be myself and love who I am and you know then what the next person thinks doesn't matter and understanding exactly who I am you know eliminates all the other factors and so she was constantly uh, pushing that on me and as far as you know even my gifts my mother is a singer as well and you know just I always admired her she was always she's always just you know the beauty in her. And I always hope to radiates through me. So, yeah, main mentor is my mama. <laughs> and, and, you know, the coach um, touched on this and, you know, you know, I've, I've been talking about, you know, the, the importance of graduating from from high school and, and uh, even the added benefits uh, of graduating from college. But but graduating, you know, getting a college education does not guarantee success. And I, I don't want to mislead the audience. I mean, it's not just about graduating from college. I mean, you can be successful um, no matter, you know, um, what your profession or, or you know, a walk of life. Uh, if you have the proper work work ethic, if you put the time into it to developing your, your skill sets um, and, you know, us, the older generation, you know, we can help um, students no matter what their aspirations are 
on their success path. You know, we, we, we've been there, we, we've succeeded, but we've also failed. I think that's very important that we learn from the life or, and, and lived experiences of others, their, their successes, but also uh, their failures. And again, everybody's going to have failures. Everybody, nobody succeeds in everything that they try to do uh, the first time. And, and I'll, I'll read a quote from uh, the great Dr. Martin Luther King. He said, whatever your life's work is, do it well. A man should do his job so well that the living, the dead, and the unborn could do it no better. So it's not just about getting a, a college degree. It, it's about having the proper work ethic, the proper attitude, the self belief and, and, and confidence. It's about recognizing people who had, who, who came before you and, and made sacrifices, you know, to, to, to help pave the path for you. I mean, these, these are important characteristics and qualities that, that people, you know, young people, students need to have. And, and, and we're here to help set them out on their journey. Um, you know, I talked about, I touched on a lot of the, um, you know, challenge that challenges that that young people face, and and a lot of it, um, the 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 message in terms of um, academic achievement and, and success, and and um, you know setting expectations and and uh, uplifting um, you know self esteem actually um, relates to us as mentors also interacting with with the students, uh, parents, um, you know caregivers, guardians, grandparents, and I know coach. Um, and I know I know many of the the students that you you mentor, many of your 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 um, high school students um, may not have you know those role models at home, but I, I I'm sure there are many situations where you do not just interact with the students, but also interact with their parents, their 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 guardians, their caregivers. Um, you know how do you go about um, trying to better you know encourage and engage engage the adults in these students' life right. lives to take you know, more, more action and activity. I think we lost them, doc. Oh, okay. there you go. Oh, there you go. Now. Yes. Let me see. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm all upside down. No, you're looking good. <laughs> you're looking good. No coach. I was just wondering, you know, how, how do you interact with the, with the adults in the, in these young people's lives? Um, and encourage them to 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 be become more active and, and and to you know be greater role models to participate in in their 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 kids education I, you know that that in many situations that may be a juggling act it, it's um, it may not be easy you know in many situations you, you you're talking about the kids in the school I mean yes. the parents in the school the parents yeah, parents. yeah. yeah. oh but we can forget that. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you know, uh I, and and you know, you have a few, but that that's why that's where we come in at. You have to be the parent. You know, we talk about being youth support, we talk about being mentors. Um everybody here from the teacher to the coach to everybody, we become that parent. Because that we know what that's we know that's the problem. So it's very hard, but you find a few parents. And so those parents you don't have to deal with, but, but the majority of the people, we don't have no parent participation. Mm. That's you crazy. Know, it's on us, you know, that's and, crazy. And, and that's why, that's why it's so hard to work here because they're not willing to put that type of work in. They don't want to come and be a conventional place. And it's not, you know, that's when we're a new and innovative school. We pick up every kid from where they at. And we move them forward, right? You know, and that's just that, and that is probably in the world, and uh, nobody wants to face it. We always want to talk about programs. You know, you need money to do the things you need to do, and you know, I, I listen to it all the time. I've said at many tables, and they say, "Well, are we not going to support this program anymore?" I said, "I don't have a program. I have an educational system." You know, I don't have a program. See, program means that we'll get in for a little while and then we'll jump out of it. But we, when you have a system that has been proven, you know, I know I got 95 to 98% graduation rate, but sometimes 100. They don't care about that. And then they just say, well, what happens to the kid once once they leave you? Well, 
what happens to any kid? You know, if they're going to be successful, they're going to be set, but give them the opportunity. You know, see, when you when you graduate kids today, you win. But when you get them in college, you dominate. And and we are these are kids with against all odds. They don't expect yeah. kids that to know nothing, to do nothing. And that's what I would tell you today early when I was talking to the kids about how you look and that you a business person. You come to school because you at work and we working on everything. You know, I told them why, why people look at them in a different manner. You know, third grade reading level. They sit in these meetings and say, well, we're going to invest our money here because they're going one or two places. They're going to jail, so we're going to make it private so we can invest our money. Oh, they're going to the funeral home. We're making the T-shirt shops rich. You know what I'm saying? All these type of things is just fads. You know, we got to back the kids up. But when you talk about music, if you ever come to Gen Academy to our morning session, I don't, I'm the DJ. I don't play rap. I play songs like what she was saying, Stevie Wonder. You know, right. those kids are getting that type of teaching. Yeah. And if I don't play certain songs like it's Friday and this old blue songs, oh, they, 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 they'll boo me. You know, so we're not listening to no rap. That's sweet. Yeah. Hey, maybe someday you can have Miss Fitz come out there and perform. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know I mean? yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because they need to see that. Yes. You know, every Wednesday I try to have a speaker or someone to come in to talk to the kids. You know, they got to see people like us, you know, think, knowing that we can be successful. You get Doc coming. They don't, they, they know you. I got a, uh, they need to see that a black man can be a doctor. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not being taught that. You know, so. Beautiful works. Beautiful works. You know, so um, how about Esther? Um, you have anything else for us that we might be able to hear speaking of music? Absolutely. I have one more for you. I actually uh, wrote this song a couple of years ago. Um, I do a lot of songwriting and uh, recording and stuff here, actually here at the crib. And so uh, we're going to do some original music. Oh, thank you. It's better right. than you.
Oh, thank you uh, for yeah, being yeah. with us. That was my pleasure. <laughs> Beautiful voice. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate so, so it. How, so how can we hear more of your music? Like, how can the audience find more of your work? Um, I'm Esther Fitz. It's E-S-T-H-E-R-F-I-T-Z on everything. I'm Apple Music, SoundCloud, Amazon. You can Google it. Um yeah, anything. And um, I have a lot of music on SoundCloud, all music, but everything else I have on all platforms. That way it's easy, easily accessible. Outstanding. Thank you, you know, so much. Yeah, thank you. You know, Coach, um, I had an opportunity several years ago of meeting one of your, your star um, graduates uh, from the Ginn Academy um, um, who went on to star at Ohio State and helped them win uh, one of their uh, um, national titles, uh, uh, Mr. Cardell Jones. Um, um, after, after I uh, met him and after their, their championship, um, I actually had an opportunity to take him in to, um, to Cleveland Clinic into the operating room to, to watch me perform a kidney transplant. And again, a lot of the, the reason I did that was so that uh, he, in his, um, um, w with his uh, celebrity, he could go on and, and, and tell other people about the importance of organ donation. Um, and I know uh, because of your insistence, he went on and actually, even though he had been drafted into the NFL, he went on to um, uh, graduate from the Ohio State University. So, again, that was because of your your teaching and, and you know, your insistence. And, and um, he knew that that was, you know, the expectation that you had of him. So, um, you know, thank you for that. Um, so any any closing remarks, Coach, that you may want to um, leave for our audience in terms of, you know, the importance of mentorship, coaching, you know, just being there, you know, on a daily basis for, for these students? I think that uh, I want people to know that the mentorship is the most important thing in society today. Uh, to make a difference and leave an impact in the world, you have to be able to change the mindset and of young people and teach them the importance of life. Uh, and the only way you can do that is having some type of organization of education um, that you don't just be cooker cutter. You know, you got to you got to back it up to the way it used to be, man. You know, um, this hand walking kids and teaching them and exposing them mm -hmm. because you can't really you know, the math, science, social engineering, you can, you have to have that. That's a requirement. But nobody's really exposing our kids to the purpose of having that, you know, and how they can be whatever they want to be, you know, based on what they, their gifts are. Um, you can never be anything if you're not exposed to it, you know. Mm -hmm. But we have to continue to... Uh, trust in God, you know what I'm saying? And I always tell people, you know, we, and that go for all of us, you know, we got to keep our trust in God. And I always leave you with the three G's, you know, if you trust in God, you know, he will guard you, he will guide you, and he will give you. And if we do that and understand it, the world will be a better place. So Amen. thank you. Amen. And Amen. so, yeah, trust in God. He will guard you, guide you, and give you. That's right. Yeah, so, um, you know, thank you for being with us uh, this evening. You've really been very inspirational. And, and I know you've given our audience, you've given us, you know, Jerome and I and, and Esther, uh, a lot to think about. Um, you know, you have big shoes to fill. I, I don't know that I will ever be able to, 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 Fill the shoes that you had those shoes, Doc. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> you know, yeah, the, you know, um, you know, you're you're a role model to to all of us, and and I mean, for the fact that you have given us, you know, your time this evening to to talk about mentorship, its importance, 
you know, right. why it's important to get an education is, is just, it means yeah. so much to us. Um, so Jerome, um, Esther, any closing remarks? Well, I want to thank uh, Coach for coming out, uh, just sharing the energy. I'm big on energy and the same energy that you give those kids is the same energy that you just gave us. And um, your time, your time is very valuable mm -hmm. and we appreciate that too. So it must have been something important to you for you to say, yes, I'm going to come on to the show, uh, Music and Medicine, and uh, talk a little bit and, you know, spread some love. So it's greatly appreciated. And I hope that uh, someday in the near future we can have you back on for you know some type of situation or project that you have coming and you want to you know come in and vibe with us I, i'd love to have you back no doubt yeah outstanding and also, one last thing before esther speaks um and if you need anything at the school as far as uh putting together any kind of donation drives any kind of toy drives mm -hmm. uh, I, I plan on doing kwanzaa this year i'm gonna do three toy drives one of them is going to be at the cadell rec center one of them is going to be probably at john f kennedy high school and I would love to bring the third one over there or oh, no even, doubt. you see you what know, I'm saying? So, Oh, no doubt. You yeah. know, that's, that's, oh, no doubt. You, we can do that. You okay. know, that's what it's all about, man. Yes, sir. You know, yeah, oh, no, 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 you can, we can lock that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And anything mm -hmm. I can do to speak with the, you know, the, the young men over at your school, I mean, you know, just call up on me anytime. Yeah. Yes. You know, they need it. Yeah. All right, Esther, you want to walk us out? You got some some flavor for us? <laughs> yeah, and I was going to say in closing remarks, I was going to say, I always say, uh, keep God first, love God, love yourself, and love others. Um, and yeah, I just, um, I don't know if you want a little music to close it out, but I got you covered. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, please. Gotcha. Yeah. And thanks, uh, everybody, see. for joining in this evening. All right. Thank got you. you. I got you. You want music or you want my, or you want me to play music or you want me to just sing it? It's up to you. Ooh. I think we wanted to just sing. Go ahead and just sing, girl. Sing. <laughs> <laughs> I see skies of blue, clouds of white, dark sacred day, dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Lovely. Thank you so much. Lovely. Thank All you. Right. Happy, uh, uh, what is this, Black History Month? Black History Month. <laughs> <Black History. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next right. time. Good night. Bye. All right, good night.